Hi everybody. Do you have some energy left? Yeah? Okay, cool. Because this will be a little rough. So let me, let me brag about a whole bunch of code I never got to, to write. So my name is Valentin. Uh, I'm an um, active member of the, Scala, the French Scala community. And uh, I have a bunch of hobbies that are basically um, not compatible. And um, before we begin, I'd like to uh, warn you because uh, we only have uh, a little time and I have much, much to, to discuss. So we we'll, won't have time for uh, funny pictures and stuff like that. And there will be a lot of code that probably uh, will look uh, a little bit scary, but bear with me and in the end, it should make sense. So this is the story of uh, a problem we had with uh, a team I worked with uh, a few months ago. Um, the problem was we, we were uh, working for a very big French company that has roughly 100 branches, and they wanted to gather all the data from, uh, produced by all the branches on a single platform. So there was roughly uh, 100 of uh, data, data sources and roughly 100 tables or streams or stuff like that per uh, data source, which makes roughly 10,000 uh, data structures. We had about six months to, to, to make the, the project from, uh, from scratch and we were a, a, a team of five or six developers. We all, of course, uh, had uh, data coming in big, uh, big batches and uh, by uh, streams. And we had to uh, make so-called privacy by design, which basically means that um, the sources would uh, tell us which field was uh, containing personal data, and we had to encrypt it or uh, hash it uh, and stuff like that. And of course, uh, in such a big company, uh, all the sources wouldn't have been uh, ready on day one to, to give us uh, their data. So we needed uh, to accommodate that and be able to uh, accept new data sources uh, along the way. This means that uh, the pi pipeline we would build to uh, ingest and validate uh, the data uh, will need to uh, be configured at runtime. We don't want to rewrite some code to validate a new data source. We needed, we needed uh, to, to define a specific uh, schema format because we needed this uh, metadata about privacy uh, and so on. And of course, we had to work with uh, various uh, formats uh, of data, JSON, CSV in input and Pocket and Avro and stuff like that in output. So we, we thought uh, about it, and our solution was uh, quite obvious. It was to build the whole pipeline around the concept of uh, schema. Of course, uh, schemas are uh, recursive. Inside the schema, you have a smaller schema, and inside the smaller schema, you have a smaller schema, and so on and so forth. And when you uh, manage or manipulate um, recursive stru uh, data structure, the natural way to, to do that is to use recursion. But there are a, a bunch of problems with explicit recursion, recursive functions. Um, of course, there are stack overflow errors, but in the case of schemas, it's not deep enough to, to, to happen. But the, the most important problem is that when you write a, a recursive traversal of, uh, say, a tree, you are mixing how you traverse your structure with what you want to do with each of its components. So we had to, to, to find something, uh, something better. Fortunately, there is an abstraction that uh, was uh, introduced in this article in 1991 uh, that's called recursion schemes, and it does exactly that. It decouples how you traverse a recursive structure from what you want to do, to do with each of its layers. And it has a, a very good uh, Scala implementation in the library Matryoshka. So I have to, to be very quick on the basics if I want to show you the examples. So 
Don't worry, there are plenty of uh, very good talks about that out there, so you can catch up later if, uh, if I am too fast today. But to use a recursion scheme, you need three, three components. You need a functor that will be called the pattern functor, and that describes the structure of your, of your recursive structure. You will need a, a fixed point type. We'll say a few words about that later. And you need algebras and co-algebras, which are basically what you do with uh, the components of your structure. So first, pattern functor. So here is a, a, a very simplistic uh, implementation of bi a binary tree. The first thing you have to do is to replace all uh, references, recursive references to the type tree here with a type parameter. And then you have to uh, implement a functor inst instance for that type, which is fairly trivial. You just have to call the, the function f on every, uh, every a there. And that's it. You, you've got a pattern functor. The problem now is that you've lost the ability to, um, to speak about trees with a single type. Because a tree of uh, depth 2 will have type tree of tree of something. A tree of depth 1 will have type tree of something, and so on and so forth. And that's where you need a, a fixed point type that will uh, cut the recursion and allow you to uh, talk about trees by saying fix of tree f, like this. You wrap uh, each layer of the tree in a fix, and then you get back uh, a single uh, homogeneous uh, type. That's it. That's not the very important part. The important part are algebras and co-algebras. They are the recipe of what you want to do with the, the elements of your uh, structure. Algebras are simply a function from f of a to a, and then uh, collapse one layer at a time of your structure. And like everything in math, uh, when you put co in front of a word, you get a new word, you just have to reverse the arrows, and a coalgebra is just uh, a function from a to fa. And it builds up one layer at a time of your structure. And, um, the, the, the A type is often uh, referred to as uh, the carrier of your algebra. That's useful uh, if you want to, to chat on the Matryoshka Gitter channel to know that. So let's uh, look at one example, the most basic recursion scheme. Every other one is uh, built around this one. It's called hylomorphism. And the definition is really simple. It's slightly edited, but it's there. So it's basically, uh, given uh, an algebra and a co-algebra, hylomorphism is a function from A to B that goes through your uh, recursive structure. So let's uh, take a look at how it works with our uh, binary tree. So we start with an A, this uh, little square there. And we want to, uh, the, the first thing we, we have to do is to call uh, the co-algebra on it that gives us an f of a, right? Because uh, coalgebra is a function from, f, from a to f of a. Then, uh, since we have a functor, we can map over it. We can consider that mapping is just picking one a inside the f of a and applying a function to it. So we pick an a, we apply hilo on it. It turns, it recursively calls the coalgebra on it that produces an f of a, we map over it, we pick an a inside, we call elo, it, call, it calls the coalgebra, and it builds an f of a. But let's say we have reached uh, a leaf of the tree, and so there is no more uh, a inside a leaf. It's, a, it's an, empty, uh, an empty f, like uh, uh, none or nil, right? So when we map, over that empty f, it doesn't uh, call the, the function we pass to map because there is no element to feed to that function, and we get back an f of b directly. So now we are able, able to uh, call the algebra on that, and that gives us a b, and we've finished with that branch of the tree, 
but we were still uh, in the process of mapping over that f of a here. So we still have to pick one element inside. We call high of it, call algebra, gives us an f, but it's empty too, because I decided to. Uh, so map gives us an f of b, we call the, the algebra, and so now our uh, f here contains only b, so it's an f of b. We can call the algebra on it, gives us a b, but we are still mapping over that uh, f uh, of a here, so we still have to call high on that. Again, call algebra, blah, 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 empty f, f of b, algebra, we have only b's in the f, so it's an f of b. We can call the algebra on it. And that's it. We have transformed an a to a b by going through uh, a whole uh, tree. But there are two uh, things to, to notice there. Um, first, we never built the whole tree. Uh, at, at any moment, we never had the whole tree built. We, only, uh, we went only through the various branches. And the other thing to note is that we call the co-algebra by starting from the roots and going down, and we call the algebra by starting from the leaves and going up. Is it okay so far? Right. So, now back to our problem. So, we basically had a bunch of uh, schemas uh, formats. We had uh, our custom schema, uh, avro schemas, parquet, and so on. So the first thing we needed to do was to define a pattern functor. We called it uh, schema f because we have a lot of imagination. And then we wrote a bunch of algebras and coalgebras to transform back and forth from uh, the various uh, formats into the schema f. And the cool thing with that uh, is that it automatically gives us a conversion between all these uh, formats for free. Because if you want to uh, go from input schema to, to bucket, you just go up to the schema f with the algebra, and then down to bucket with the algebra. So uh, we, for example, can convert av Avro to bucket uh, for free. So let's look at some code. Uh, it's fairly simple. It takes uh, a lot of place, but it's simple. We have uh, a small ADT. ADT. Uh, with uh, structs for objects, uh, arrays, and simple types like uh, integer, string, and so on. And again, uh, a very trivial uh, functor uh, instance. So the algebras, uh, this is the algebra that goes from uh, schema f to, to bucket. The name for uh, the bucket schema in Spark is data type. So we need to um, transform uh, one layer of a schema f into a data type. And we just have to focus and, uh, and care about one layer at a time. So what does it mean? It means that when I get to this, for example, area f of lm, lm here is already a data type. It has already been, been taken care of by, uh, by recursion, right? So all you have to do is translate into array type, which is the Sparks uh, thing for arrays, and that's it. Really, really sim simple. And then when I have uh, a fix of schema f, uh, I can translate, transform it to, uh, to packet using the scheme kata with my uh, algebra. Okay, so co-algebra is the other way around. I want to go from uh, Avro Avro schema to uh, my schema f. Again, all I have to do is to focus on one layer at a time, and I will build schema f containing smaller bits of uh, Avro schemas, right? So again, it's really, really simple. Uh, I have this get type method uh, in the Avro API that tells me whether uh, my schema is a record or an, an array, an enum, uh, and so on. So all I have to do is uh, build one layer of array f and putting uh, Avro, small, smaller Avro schemas inside it. 
OK so far? Right? And so now uh, I can uh, go from an average schema to a fix of uh, schema f using the HANA scheme. Or I can use uh, HILO directly to go from average schema to a parquet schema using both uh, the algebra from the previous slide and this score algebra. Pretty cool. So now uh, the, the main purpose of that project was uh, data validation, right? We wanted to uh, validate uh, incoming data and transform it then to uh, something that is more uh, usable in, uh, in a large scale. So we used uh, the JTO validation uh, library. It's basically uh, extracted from uh, Play Framework. And it works very, very well to uh, validate, uh, for example, JSON data or uh, CSV, or stuff like that. So uh, it defines the, the rule type that takes uh, uh, an input type, uh, most of the time it's JSON, and an output type. Usually, when you use that library, uh, the output type is your business uh, case class, right? You want to read JSON and transform to your business case class. Here, we uh, do not want to write business case class uh, because we have 10,000 of, of them. So we uh, just define it uh, a generic uh, representation of data, which we called data f because we still have much, much imagination. And it's basically almost the same thing as schema f, uh, but in arrays, we have a list of elements instead of having only the uh, schema for the element type. And so our rules go from uh, a schema f, our, we, 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 sorry, we have a, 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 an algebra that goes from schema f and produces a big rule able to validate a, a big J JSON blob. Again, it's fairly simple. I don't have time to, to go into the, the, the full detail of that, but uh, again, uh, the, the, the important thing is to note that when you uh, arrive to this array f of elements, the element uh, variable here is already a rule. It has already been taken care of uh, by the, the, the previous step. So all you have to do is use the, the JTO combinator to make, we have a rule for an element and we make a rule for lists and we're done. Really, really simple stuff. You almost don't have to, to, to think about it. You, you just write it and it's, uh, it writes itself basically. So, that was for the easy stuff. Is everybody okay? Okay. <laughs> of course, not everything is that easy. I, I, I see people not thinking that the previous one were easy, right? Okay. So, for example, uh, you cannot write uh, an algebra uh, from uh, schema F to Avro. It's not possible. Uh, because the uh, Avro library mandates that when you create a record, you give it a, uh, a unique name. But since we only care and we only see one layer at a time, we do not have the, the possibility to know what name we've already used uh, before uh, the, the, in, the, in the rest of the, of the traversal. So, of course, you, you cannot write an algebra directly, but you can write other things, and you, can, you have basically two solutions. Um, first, the first solution I won't probably present today is to label each uh, element of your schema with its path, and use that path as the unique name, because paths are unique uh, in, a, in a tree, so you, you're good. And another solution is to um, find a way to store all the previous uh, bits of schemas you've uh, already produced and uh, in, in some kind of uh, reg registry and try to uh, use that to know uh, if you have already uh, built some uh, model bit of schema and uh, reuse that or else reserve uh, uh, a name for the schema you are building. So I skip through the first solution. 
and we'll see how we can use uh, uh, a registry to store the schemas we've already, the, the bits of schemas we've already built during our process. So schemes, recursion schemes and uh, algebras come with uh, different flavors. You can embellish uh, algebras. One way to do that is uh, the monad monadic flavor where uh, you basically uh, wrap, oh sorry, wrap the results of your algebra inside some monad. So uh, instead of going from f of a to a, you go from f of a to m of a. And by the way, uh, when you want to use that, uh, a functor instance for f is not enough. You need a, a traverse instance. So basically what we are doing now is uh, we define some magical way to uh, take the fingerprint of a schema and use that fingerprint as a key to store in our uh, registry, which is basically just a map. And so we wrap all the, 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 the schemas we produce inside a state monad, and now we have access to this registry while we are building uh, our little bits of, uh, of schemas. So that's it, almost. Um, if we have this magical function that uh, compute the fingerprints uh, of smaller bits of schema, all you, we have to do is to uh, get the registry from the state, and using that, if we've already seen the, that, that kind of, uh, of schema, we reuse it, or we create a new schema and we give it a fresh name. All right? And of course, it's not kata, it's kata m, because it uses an algebra m, and so on. Well, maybe. Okay, and finally, now we have validated data, we have uh, built some big data F uh, representing data generically. The last remaining thing we have to do is to um, transform it into a serialized uh, version that is more uh, amenable to uh, large-scale uh, processing. And so basically, uh, we transform that uh, incoming JSON into uh, Avro or into uh, Parquet. So to the, the, easy, the easiest way, for example, to, uh, to write uh, an Avro record to a Kafka topic is to use a generic record. If you have a generic record and an Avro schema, you're good to go. And the same goes with uh, Spark and Parquet. Uh, all you have to do is build a row, and if you have a row and a schema, you can, uh, you can dump your uh, LED to, to disk. So the generic record uh, thing is quite trivial. It's just translating from data F to generic record. It's like the isomorphic. The one for Spark and Rose is a little bit trickier because if you wrap every node of your data F inside a row, you will end up with um, tables that have a strange shape. For example, if you have uh, a table with only two columns, you don't want each column to be wrapped inside a row. You want a single row like that with your two columns. So it's a, a little bit trickier because we cannot know where we are in a tree. So we cannot know if uh, we have reached uh, a leaf so that at, the, at this point we don't want to wrap. And so we, no, we cannot um, use the, the schemes we've uh, seen before. But fortunately, there is another scheme, it's called uh, para, and it uses uh, um, another kind of algebra, uh, of embellished algebra, it's with, which is called uh, G-algebra, and basically the embellishment is done on the other side of the arrow. Now, instead of going from F of A to A, we are going from F of W of A to an A. And in the, in the case of para, the W is this tuple that contains the part of the tree we already have uh, processed and the result of that process, right? Instead of just having the result of the previous step, 
we also have the little bit of tree we have processed at the previous step. And this uh, gives us the, abil the ability to just know almost where we are in our tree. So if um, at the previous step we had uh, a simple type, like an int, a string, or so on, it means that we have wrapped it inside a row because it's the only thing we, we, we can do, but we shouldn't have. So all we need to do is to unwrap it and make a bigger row with all these fields. All right? And so, and all the, 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 the other uh, cases are uh, fairly trivial. You only just wrap stuff inside rows and you just have to unwrap it when, uh, when it's needed. And that's it. And so we, we have a completely uh, generic pipeline using uh, purely, functional, uh, purely functional programming and with no types, which is kind of fun, I think. Of course, I would have um, much more examples to, to, to present, uh, but I won't have the time. For example, uh, once you get a, sh a schema, you can uh, generate a random data that validates that schema. Uh, you can um, do pretty, pretty crazy stuff. We, we also did uh, stuff with um, Catalyst uh, expressions in Spark. So we used uh, recursion schemes basically to produce Java code in order for these uh, operations to be faster on, uh, on Scala. And of course, this was uh, a nice story that was inspired from real facts. This is our mascot, which is very fortunate because we use the Matryoshka library. But it's inspired only. Um, Actually, we went into production uh, with a, a first version that had uh, plenty of uh, explicit recursion and that was a, a real nightmare to, 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 to test and to, and, to, uh, and to manage. And we then refactored all the code using, um, using recursion schemes. And since we have still uh, two minutes left, uh, here is a, a very dirty picture of a cat. You probably uh, might feel like this poor, uh, this poor kitten right now because all that stuff can be a little bit difficult to, to grasp at first. But come to the Matryoshka's uh, GitHub channel, uh, try it, uh, read, uh, read the documentation and, other, and see the, the, the talks about that. And in no time, you will feel like this cat and you'll be uh, a better programmer. And that's it. Thank you.